don't look like me, don't act like me, don't, don't even think a thought like me. But you matter to me definitely. Definitely, it don't matter, cause you matter. Cause you matter. Kindness fits everybody. Everybody wants kindness. Kindness serves everybody. Everybody needs kind, kind, kindness. Kindness fits everybody. Everybody wants kindness. Kindness serves everybody. Everybody needs kind, kind, kindness. Why do we always run and hide? Pick our sides. Say we tried. Irrationally We scream and shout Get it out We keep our doubts Indefinitely But now I think it's time We walk across these lines You don't look like me Don't act like me Don't Don't even think a thought like me But you matter to me definitely, definitely. It don't matter Cause you matter Kindness fits everybody Everybody wants kindness Kindness serves everybody Everybody needs kind, kind, kindness Kindness fits everybody Everybody wants kindness Kindness serves everybody Everybody needs kind, kind, kindness The world we What is all this? It's your biggest fan. Well, that's not supposed. No! No! Turn it off! Brandon, turn it off! Oh! <laughs> These things are dangerous. No capes. Hello, everyone. I'm Brandon. And I'm uh, John. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the so-and-so show. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. John, do you want to tell everybody why you're um, so excited? Can I? Oh, please, that's why we're here. Okay, well, as you can see, I'm dressed as my favorite comic book character, Radiation Rabbit. And, and why, pray tell, do you love Radiation Rabbit? What's not to love? It, it, it's an incredible origin story. Okay. Nuclear physicist Dr. Jack Velveteen sacrifices himself by shutting off a nuclear reactor manually. 
and finds himself exposed to excessive amounts of radiation along with a stray bunny that has wandered into the reactor room with him. Sounds plausible. I know! So, so everyone assumes he's dead, but then he emerges and seems to be normal except for an insatiable appetite for carrots and justice. <laughs> oh, the radiation made him part bunny. Yes, you've read it? No, one was a lucky guess. Wow. Huh. So Radiation Rabbit has the power to leap incredibly high. He can hear conversations through walls. He has the power to uh, light up entire cities by biting into the power grid. His list goes on and on. And, and on. Why, why are we talking about Radiation Rabbit today? Well, you're about to find out. Please welcome someone who knows All right, come on in, come on in. Sure thing. Have a seat, Mr. Freedom. <laughs> Slide on in there. How's it going? I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, tell us who you are and uh, what you know. I'm Ross Freedom, and I design and write comic books. <laughs> Not just any comic book. You are the creator of the most incredible comic book character ever, Radiation Rabbit. I'm, I'm glad you like him. I like him. Like him. I don't know what I would do without him. Listen, can you uh, give us any inside scoops about uh, further adventures of Radiation Rabbit? Well, at one point... Or, or, or how does Radiation Rabbit overcome his arch nemesis, the well, hawk? Well, if you would... Or will Radiation Rabbit ever find his mysteriously disappeared lab partner, Georgina Frankincense? Well, it's... Or will he have a completely different adventure, Radiation well, Rabbit? I don't really... I gotta okay. know! Okay, I think he's trying to tell you, John. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to be really excited about this. <laughs> Radiation Rabbit mm -hmm. is going to, <coughs> once and for all, <coughs> become <coughs> Robot Rabbit. Hmm? Dr. Jack Velveteen finds a cure for his radiation and chooses to retire from crime fighting in an assisted living community for former superheroes in Sarasota. <laughs> he just moves to Sarasota? <laughs> Yes, but while there, he teams up with former crime-fighting cohort, the Unmeltable Snowman. And they create Robot Rabbit in an impromptu lab they made in the rec center. Robot Rabbit? Is, it's just a robot? Well, he's not just a robot. He's a rabbit robot. So no more radiation rabbit? Nope. But I really think you'll love Robot Rabbit. Huh. I've read Radiation Rabbit my whole life. How could you do this? I felt like it was time to create something different. Nuclear mutants are old news. Artificial intelligence is really the wave of the future. It's the kind of change the comic needed. But I don't like change! Well, it'd be a little different, but... You adjust to the I don't like different things. Things should be the same. Always, always, always. Oh, no. <laughs> the bunny. Is he always? No, he's fine. He's fine. He, this happens at least twice a week. So, uh, thanks uh, for coming on the show. Mm. All righty then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's Bible story time with Kellen. Here's your wall. Hey, gents. Hey, Kellen. Oh, wow. Are you Radiation Rabbit? Yeah. One of my absolute favorites. Yeah, mine too. 
Aw, why are you so down? He just met the creator. You got to meet Ross Freedom? Yeah. Was it incredible? Not really. He's changing Radiation Rabbit into something different. Oh man, that's disappointing. And also a little exciting. No, Kellen, it's a mockery. You got a story for us today, Kellen? I sure do. And you can find this story in the book of Luke. And here to help me tell it are my kid friends with another edition of... Kid Spective. A religious leader came up to Jesus and asked him a question. Teacher, what must I do to receive eternal life? Hmm? Jesus asked him, what is written in the law? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your strength and with all your mind. Oh, and uh, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Jesus told him he should do that. He should love God and love his neighbor. But the man wanted to make himself look good. So he asked another question. And who is my neighbor? Hmm? That's when Jesus told this story. Someone was traveling on the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. I'm walking and I'm walking on this here road from Jerusalem to Jericho, keeping an eye out for robbers. Ah, what? Who are you? How did you get? How did you do? Ah, please! Ow, that hurts! Oh goodness! Ah, my head! Oh, my hand! Ah. Robbers attacked the traveler. He was hurt so bad he was almost dead. I said he was almost dead. Oh, right. Uh. <laughs> Better. Thanks. As he lay there, almost dead. A priest happened to be walking down the road. Help walking, me. Walking. Oh, oh, oh. <sighs> yeah. Um, disgusting. Here, let's just... Ah, that's better. The priest walked by on the other side of the road without helping. Then a Levite came by, someone else who worked in God's temple. And I'm walking, and I'm walking. <laughs> okay, wow. Uh, ew. Blah. Okay, <laughs> no. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> the Levite walked by without helping too. Everything seemed kind of hopeless. Well, then a Samaritan came by. To the people Jesus was talking to, a Samaritan was considered to be an outcast. They were strange. Different. They were enemies, even. Would the Samaritan help? Walking. Help me. They got you good. Here, let's clean these wounds. What's that? It smells like olive oil and wine? That's how the story goes. I guess they were all out of hydrogen peroxide in Samaria. Huh. Here, let me put you on my donkey, and I'll take you to an inn, where you can get some rest. Can I help you? Yes, my friend here has been badly injured. I need to go for the day. Here's one silver coin. Another one silver coin to make two. Take care of him. And if it costs any more than that, I'll pay you any extra when I get back. But of course, continental breakfast lasts until 10 a.m. Coffee and tea are complimentary. Help yourself. Thanks. When Jesus finished the story, he asked the religious leaders, which of the three do you think was a neighbor to the man that was attacked by the robbers? The one who felt sorry for him. And Jesus told him, go and do as he did. The end. Wow. Amazing job, kids. Thanks. Anytime. Sure thing. My no pleasure. Problem. All right. I'll see, see you guys ya. later. Bye-bye. Farewell. 
Great story. Yeah, sounds like Jesus really surprised them with that ending. Yeah, Jesus did that a lot. The priest and the Levite seemed like they were the people that should help, but they didn't. It was the Samaritan who was different that actually was the good neighbor. I think the story teaches us that you can show kindness to anyone, even someone, and maybe even especially someone that is different from you. Thanks a lot, Kellen. Yeah, thanks. No problem. I'll see you all next time. Later. You know, Brandon, it's easy to be kind to people who are the same as us or people we're used to. It's, mm -hmm. it's a little bit harder to be kind to people who are different, like Robot Rabbit. Uh, maybe I should give him a chance. <laughs> okay. But you know Robot Rabbit isn't a real person. It's just a character in a comic book, right? <laughs> Reveal the question! How can you be kind to people who are different from you? I don't get along with my pet gerbil, Frank. He's really different from me. Maybe I can clean his cage more often. Not a person. Oh, well, then I don't get along with my second grade teacher, Mrs. Mabe. You keep in touch with your second grade teacher? Yeah, we're friends on the internet. Oh. She always posts cat memes and I just, I'm not really a cat person. Okay, well, most of us know people who are different than we are. What are some ways you can be kind to those people? Talk about it together. I guess I'm not really a gerbil person either. <laughs> we'll see you next time on The So-and-So Show. Goodbye. Yeah,